Hello and uh, good day to Slovenia. Good day to everybody here at the World Ham Congress. And hello and good day to the world. First of all, thank you also, Paul, for the thrilling and motivating introduction. And uh, thank you, Maida, for making this Congress happen again. I'm honored to be here, and I will give you a short presentation on the current overview on EIHA, the European Industrial Hemp Association, and our industry. The latest change on our, of our board of directors uh, was um, voted and elected um, on our last um, general meeting. You can see here the resigned uh, former president, John Hobson, after 11 years of very successful work for our association. Um, he resigned and our new president was elected on 31st of May, Mark Reinders of the company Hempflex in Holland. We also have a new deputy elected uh, on that um, general meeting. It is uh, Sylvester Bertuschelli from Interchambre in France. And we have a complete new member, new board member. It's uh, Boris Banas from Hempseed or Europe. The present hemp industry, you can see on this map, uh, the little symbols, the hemp leaf symbols are our association's regular members. And um, we got 14 regular members in total right now. And 122 associate members from 35 countries worldwide. The last year was a record year for the cultivation area in Europe with 25,000 hectares. Also with the members, regular members and associate members of our association and also with the attendants uh, and visitors of our last conference. You can see the numbers again and we have a very strong, a very strong increase of members in the last years. Our cooperation, our association cooperates, of course, with associations all around the world. You can see them named down here on this slide. And it's very important to exchange the information that we gather and that we summarize uh, on every different continent of the world to help each other to fully understand the potential of the hemp plant. Here you have a little uh, nice uh, slide to see the country distribution of our members. Still um, Germany and the Netherlands and meanwhile also the uh, United States are the or have the largest number of members in the in our association. And here you have the 14 regular members as they are currently. The one of the biggest um, decisions of our last general meeting uh, was or actually the second last meeting was already that we um, created special interest groups for specific topics, to, uh, specific issues that need our attention. And um, for all regular members, it is uh, possible to join the groups, to share the know-how, to share ideas, and also, of course, to gather um, the scientific, solid scientific data to, for example, work on the CBD issues uh, on THC, either regarding the crop limit or the food limits or guidance values, values that are out there and maybe have to change or reconsider. As I said before, the 13th International Conference of the European Industrial Hemp Association, which was in June, beginning of June this year, was a big success. We never had that many uh, visitors. 
in total you can see that we have 290 participants from 42 countries, which is a really, really great success. Of course, um, on the website eiha.org, uh, you will find lots of information, uh, not only the studies, reports, presentations from every uh, single um, or every single uh, conference in the past, but also uh, studies or reports that are um, getting published. Uh, from different experts all around the world and of course especially for the European hemp industries the latest information of the markets and the latest developments. The hemp cultivation area as mentioned before has um, increased uh, strongly in the last years especially from 2012 to 2015 and 25,000 hectares is a record is a record year I, as far as I remember since 60 years as, a, as, a, as an association um, we um, try our best to gather and uh, summarize data um, it is very important to have this data available for first of all authorities that are uh, that need this information to decide to rule uh, possible new regulations maybe even financial support for um, a renewal, renewable resource like hemp and also secondly for the media yeah, we have to get the media's attention to um, to bring up our point and thirdly for our industry itself. Uh, we need this data to establish a, a solid overview on the industry's strength and um, it will help everybody in the industry to be able to uh, have this data for his own company or for his own venture available. The newest survey will be uh, is already out. Um, the information is getting uh, gathered right now and um, we are trying to have all the information available by end of the year, latest of course at the next conference in 2017. I will uh, give you a little, um, a very short overview on the results of the uh, 2015 survey. For example, you can uh, see the tons of hemp fibers produced in the European in, in the European hemp industry or by the European hemp industry, uh, and um, you not you only can uh, see the total tons, but also of course the applications that those fibers are used in. As you can see here, the automotive compos composites are still the most important use of fibers. Um, shortly followed by insulation material. All, also very important is for us to gather information on pricing for the hemp materials that our industry is um, working with and producing. Uh, as you can see, hemp fibers still have a price advantage um, versus uh, flex fibers. Um, shifts in tons and of course also their applications you can see here um, 43,000 tons of hemp shifts um, were um, produced and um, annual embedding is the most important use well my personal favorite uh, when it comes to hemp and hemp raw material um, are the hemp seeds the one of the um, probably more sophisticated food raw materials the world has to offer um, we can see here the tons uh, the production of uh, hemp seed in tons and of course again also the 
applications or the usage of those seeds and food and food oil are the biggest markets and uses for the seeds currently harvested from hemp, hemp plants. Um, additionally, uh, since uh, um, a very short time, CBD has increased uh, prominence um, the, in the hemp industry and it is a very important um, uh, alternative um, product, alternative raw material, um, so that there are several, several uh, uses, usages for the hemp harvest. Um, and as you can see here, there was a very large increase from 2010 to 2015 by 3,000 uh, percent. Further growth is even expected in the next year. Another important issue that we try to um, do our best on as, a, as an association is to uh, hand out information in various ways uh, next to the flyer or booklet um, describing the um, different applications or usages of hemp. We also um, printed a poster. It might be only uh, a small um, thing, but uh, it's very important to have this information available. There are still a lot of people, especially there are still a lot of authorities that have not either heard or heard of hemp or not heard, uh, not have all the information available that they need to be even more interested. And on my last um, visit to Brussel with Michael Caros, our CEO of the association, um, we actually found a, a poster on uh, hemp and various applications of the hemp plant uh, in the ministry, in the, in the, in the hallway of the ministry. Uh, and uh, we, we were so happy about this that we um, decided we have to do a, 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 new, um, a new version of this poster uh, to present all the information in a very, very small focused way. The, another big step was the IISCC plus certification for hemp. Um, for the first, it is actually the first certification of uh, uh, natural fiber worldwide. And that was the reason why the IIHA um, support, supports the cost for all members. In, for example, um, my colleague, uh, Mr. Delon, sits right next to me. Uh, his company, Han Farm, and also Mark Reiner's company, Hempflex, in Holland, they uh, already passed the certification. They are certified, and um, we already uh, just recently published a press release on both certifications. As an example, you can see here how this looks. Um, you can, um, every member, every fiber producer can um, apply for this certification and it is the, uh, it is a statement on the international sustainability and carbon certification, which is also very important, for example, for the automotive industry, as you remember from the slides before, is the main and most important customer for hemp fibers. Next to Han Farm and Hempflex, you can see some other smaller or some also larger companies here on this slide that are um, have already uh, certified their products or interested in their in this certification. Um, it is a multi-stakeholder initiative and it gets um, uh, governed by the association, by an association with 83 members. The main activities of the European Industrial Hemp Association for the next one or two years will be position papers, press releases, lobbying, and meetings on the most important issues that we feel and see for the um, future, for the short-term future. 
uh, we need an update on THC guidance values for food. There are some in Germany, but they are kind of out to the out of date and we need guidance values for all European member states. The THC limits for industrial hemp varieties should go back to the limit of 0.3 on the field so that there are more choices for the right hemp variety, which we mean, what we mean with that is there are varieties right now that produce large amounts of fibers and sheaves, but we also need more choices for hemp varieties that produce hemp seeds. The, we need a harmonized CBD legislation. It is very important to differentiate between high, medium and low CBD concentrations in various products from food to prescribed medication and pharmaceutical products. Of course, as always, and that's why we are so interested in all the data, the first step is to have a solid and updated scientific background information. Based on this, the CBD interest group, but also, of course, also the THC uh, group and external experts and the board itself will develop position papers. Well, why should you join EIHA? This is a very short question and uh, um, even uh, a shorter answer. Well, you should do it to support hemp, to support the hemp industry. And here I give you a couple of examples what um, your benefits are when you join um, our association. Of course, regular members are featured in the leaflets that we uh, update every one or two years. We, will ha we have those special interest groups where you can join the discussion and join the solution for a couple of um, very, very important issues and problems and challenges. And um, we have also a kind of a hemp marketplace so that we, we get an increasing, a strong increasing number of uh, inquiries and requests from outside the industry that we are circulating to all members, of course. Then there is the database. I already mentioned that. We already have like more than 400 presentations, reports, and documents available online. And again, help the hemp industry to grow, help lobbying, and uh, so that the policy doesn't forget hemp. And with your, with your support, we can work on uh, more and more on our, well, we can continue with our work for the hemp industry. Thank you for your intention. Thank you very much, Daniel. Nice to see you, nice to hear you. Yes, uh, Slovenia must know a very uh, place of many producers. So in uh, membership of EHA, we have this uh, year's um, a progress uh, one step uh, here and we made it Slovenian Association uh, of uh, government together take uh, all producers and they will go in a part so you will have uh, many new memberships there